Um, to understand the significance of the Government's creation of the Sustainability Transformation Plans, I think we need to be aware of what's gone before and to consider the extent of the financial crisis. In 2012, the Coalition Government passed the Health and Social Care Act, paving the way for the privatisation of the National Health Service and re removing the duty of the Secretary of State to provide and secure a comprehensive health service in England. I believe these STPs are a key part in the Government's plan to drive through privatisation. A report in Monday's Liverpool Echo leaked some of the detail of Merseyside and Cheshire's STP, reporting an anticipated £1 billion deficit by 2012. It talks of a need to reduce demand, reduce unwarranted variation and reduce costs. All very nice ambitions, but the idea that you try to reduce demand just to plug a £1 billion funding gap is frankly the wrong way to deal with planning a, a sensible health service. The STP also says that there is an appetite for hospital reconfiguration, an appetite with whom, one would ask, as the existing setup is currently un unaffordable. And it says there will be a requirement for our hospitals to be reconfigured, consolidated with less sites and cl clinicians and consultants, working in increasingly new emerging networks. There is a problem with the commas in the document, so who knows what they mean. In other words, there will be cuts to staff and cuts to hospitals. It goes on to talk and say that the shape and size of hospital bed base will need to be configured. In other words, there is a real threat to the number of hospital beds we'll have available, and I'm particularly concerned about Arrow Park Hospital in my constituency. One of the radical proposals is the merger of four major hospitals in the area. So let's be clear, the SDPs are vehicles for cuts. They are being devised in secret, hence the need for the local paper to leak the details, and they are to be delivered at arm's length from the Secretary of State by local areas, just as the 2012 Health and Social Care Act allows him to. He can just shrug his shoulders and say, it is nothing to do with me. I believe that this is absolutely not good enough. The Government must publish the STPs in full. It must provide time and resource for meaningful consultation with health care workers, the public and elected representatives, and it must provide the extra funding the NHS so desperately needs. Otherwise, these STPs will prove the final piece in the privatisation jigsaw, and we see the sale of assets, our hospitals sold off, we'll see the breakup of services with patients having to find their way around a, a fragmented and dwindling healthcare system, and our hard-working NHS staff will see their jobs more and more moving to private providers and their pay in terms and conditions being undermined. The public absolutely does not want this. They know what, they know what the government's up to, and I have had such a big mail back on this issue. Uh, people are very concerned, and they absolutely understand the context. There is another a way around this. I believe it's time for the government to hold up its hands, admit it's been rumbled, and put an end to the privatisation of the National Health Service.